Hello, people. I got a very special announcement. The merch store is open. That's right. Shop.jaredfree.com. Let me repeat it. Shop.jaredfree.com. I got t-shirts. I got sweatshirts. I got long sleeves. I got accessories. That's right. Fanny packs, flip-flops, masks, bathing suits, totes, Beach by noon, Cape by noon, Freed by noon. I got shirts that say feather, feather. I got your charcuterie board stinks. All the good stuff. Go check it out. Go look through the stuff. Check out what you like. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Go buy something for your friend and feather their nuts. It is shop.jaredfree.com. That's shop.jaredfree.com. Go check it out. Welcome to the J Train Podcast. This is J Train Jared Freed coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side. We are here Monday through Friday with your emails, your stories, your questions. And I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you for watching in YouTube land. Let me hear it from you, YouTube land. Comment, 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 comment. Write a comment right now. I'll answer you now. Comment, 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 comment in the in the YouTube section. Subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend, a brother, a sister, a coworker, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears will take them. I'm here for your quarantine content needs. That's right. We're going to do some emails. I'm going to do a coronavirus rant of the day. I got some charcuterie chat. Let's get to it. We're going to get right into it. Case of the X, Podcast at gmail.com, Podcast at gmail.com. Dear Jared. I'd prefer to be anonymous with this question, please. Yeah, have you listened to the show? I hope you're keeping safe and well and happy. Okay, let's get to it. Started seeing this guy who invited me to a wine and cheese gathering that his ex-girlfriend is hosting. They broke up seven years ago and are still really close. I said I would be happy to go. Here's where I felt weird. He asked me to keep away from him in front of her. I'm <laughs> So she wouldn't think him and I are together as he doesn't want to hurt her feelings. Apparently, she isn't over him, according to him, but he is very much over her. And since he wants to protect her feelings, he didn't want her knowing him and I are kind of dating. I brought this up with him and he told me me, if him and I were to become serious and exclusive, he will have a proper talk with her and let her know. Do you think this is anything that should concern me? Is this all a bit odd or am I overthinking things? This is odd. Let me start with that. By the way, in the end, he didn't end up taking me to the gathering. He just went on his own, I guess, to avoid the possibility of any drama or upset. This is odd. This is a problem. This is something that you're, you're not overthinking. You are dating him. You should not apologize for your own feelings. You are enjoying his company. You are trying to get him to know him more. The weirdest line in this is he asked me to keep away from him in front of her. What? Are you not going to the party together? Are you not going to walk through the door together? The minute you walk in, I know who's fucking. They walked in together. They smell like each other. I can smell the nickels from here. That's it, it, What is he going to do? Keep away from me in front of my friends. What are you going to do? Like give each other knowing glances? That's a bad recipe. Now, do I think that they are now hooking up? No. Do I think that he, I think he is preserving a relationship that he has right now. She is filling a void for him in some way. Maybe it's she texts him on a daily basis. Maybe they go back and forth. Maybe they hang out every now and again. It's not, let's not make it about her. Whether she's over him or not doesn't matter. This is his problem. He is not letting go of 
the type of configuration of their relationship that they have now. And he's not willing to make that uncomfortable for you. So that just tells you that he is holding on to her. I, I don't know what sense he has her. I don't know what she does for him. I don't know if it's a texting thing. I don't know if he's holding on to her for later. These are all possibilities. But he does not want to disrupt the configuration of his life to grow with you. That's all you need to know. You want to grow with him. He doesn't want to change things to grow with you. This is a problem. You should say something. And it's not to leave your friend or to go away from your friend. It's to, hey, if you don't want to be seen in public with me, I don't want to date you because I'm looking to get serious at some point in some way. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. 22-year-old virgin. Hi, Jared. I love your podcast. Appreciate the daily entertainment. I'm writing in from Mexico City. Your pod is so relatable. Mexico City. Hola. I'm a 22-year-old girl. I've only had one relationship with a guy who happened to be very religious, didn't want to have sex, so I'm still a virgin, LOL. I'm not proud, but also I wouldn't have want to have sex with whoever comes my way. Anyways, I've downloaded the dating apps, and I'm worried how, how should I approach this. As a side note, I happen to have a lot of matches with guys who are 30, so of course they have a lot of experience. Should I express my virginity as something that makes me special or as something, something kind of shameful so that they can tell me that they will teach me? I appreciate your advice. Thanks in advance. A Mexican fan. Well... Listen, I appreciate your email. I think it's neither of those things. You are what you is. That's it. You are what you is. You are great. You are wonderful. You are for someone. I don't know who that person is. But with that being said, your, vin- your virginity is who you are. That's okay. You, I, and your position is also totally understandable to anyone that would come. If someone said to you, wait a minute. You're 22 and you had a religious boyfriend and you didn't have sex. You didn't just run to a street corner and fuck the nearest guy. That guy's an idiot. So all you need to do is when it comes up, you let them know. And it's not that you're not special because of it and you're not a shameful loser. You're neither. You're just you and you are fine. So it's just saying... When, the, when, when that conversation comes, you don't have to go on the apps and make it your bio. Hi, I'm the Virgin Mary. Please date me. No, 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 no. You meet people. You introduce yourself. When, conversate, when you feel comfortable talking in a sexy manner with someone, hey, also, there's something you should know. I've never had sex. But I'm really enjoying my time with you, getting to know you. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Long distance after just two months. Thanks, COVID. I'm in a very fresh relationship of about two and a half months. We met on Tinder but have, but had some mutual friends and connected pretty instantly. We met on Tinder but had some mutual friends connected pretty instantly. Decided to, uh, to exclusively see each other just within the first week of dating. It was a scary quick connection for both of us and as the girl in this situation, I suddenly felt like I didn't really know how to play the game of giving, ch- giving chase. Add COVID to this mess and we didn't really date. We fell right into the hangout at home routine, seeing each other nearly every other day, spending nights together one to two times a week. It's hard to say I'm busy when we're all essentially trapped in our homes. Right around the two-month mark, we were prematurely thrown into a long-distance relationship. He works as a hunting guide, and we knew things would be long-distance eventually, but thanks to COVID, that went from a projected date of August to the end of April. Is hunting, like, happening now? That seems weird. Like, I would think, considering the situation, everyone is, like, locked into a certain... Per- I, it's weird to, to me, I, you know, my, my spidey sentences, my fuckboy senses go off when I hear, well, gotta go now. Uh, <laughs> pandemic? Bring in the hunting brigades! What? We now live three and a half hours apart with him being fairly remote. Before he left, we talked about expectations and seeing each other, but it was all fairly vague since we, he couldn't predict much of his schedule. I'm a planner by nature. I have a dog, which means I have to hire someone to stay with her when I go visit him. In a perfect world, I would like to see uh, like him to lead being the one to initiate inviting me out there, etc. He's already tentatively pushed back our first planned weekend due to his workload, and I knew this was, uh, this was what I signed up for, so I'm trying to be as easygoing as possible. Going with the flow makes me 
incredibly anxious, so herein lies my dilemma. We haven't been dating very long, but we are dating exclusively. I would like more communication and planning, uh, maybe even a phone call here or there. Uh, that isn't just for phone sex. How do I express my needs without seeming needy in such an incredibly fresh relationship? I'll say this. I don't care how quickly you got into a relationship. Once you're in the relationship, you have the right to say, hey, I'm not getting out of this thing what I want in a relationship. So just because you waited two years for someone to be exclusive with you doesn't mean you have more of a right to be like, hey, where's my call? Or to call him first. And be like, hey, where have you been? You have a standard. Your standard is developing over time. That's okay. That standard can change every day. It's about you being honest and open with when that change happens. So right now, okay, you guys get together fairly quick. Great. Then you start staying together every day. Great. Then he's like, gotta go uh, hunt pheasants or some shit. Okay, fine. That's a little weird, but fine. Now you're sitting here. Hey, he hasn't called. That's something you should be texting him. Hey, he, he has no plan to see me. That's something you should be talking to him about. If his response to you would be, well, I don't know, we've only been dating two months, then he doesn't want to be that with you ever. That's the reality. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. X moving on too quick. My ex and I dated for a year, year and a half. The relationship was toxic, I guess, looking back. He would treat me like trash, ditch out on plans, holidays, special occasions, claimed he didn't believe in giving presents, stopped having sex with me. And anytime I'd try to break up or question his actions, he'd cry, refuse, to bla- uh, refuse and blame it on his father, blame it on his mental health, blame it on my bad communication skills, etc. Numerous times I accused him of cheating, but without solid proof, I choose to believe him when he said he wasn't. This sounds like the worst fucking time ever. Uh, well, this ga- all ga- uh, this all game, this all came to a head after Valentine's Day, after being ditched on Christmas and my birthday. <laughs> how do you? I listen. I I get how like things get away from you, but like that once you ha- there once someone ditches you on your birthday and then ditches again on Christmas, like the bir- the Christmas like getting ditched in general is that person doesn't want to be where you are. Let's not, this is, I can generalize here. If you're ever ditched, that person just doesn't want to be in the situation that you want to be in. That make, take that and make it, stop making it personal. You got ditched, that's okay. They did that because you thought the relationship was in a place that they didn't think so. They thought they had a right to ditch. So that's all you need to know. Don't Take out the, well, he had an issue and he went to work and his dad sometimes tells him to quiet his mouth at the dinner table. No, 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 no. That's it, plain and simple. Well, that Saturday we, uh, so after being ditched on Christmas and my birthday, we had agreed days in advance that Valentine's Day was to be celebrated. Third time's a charm. Well, that Saturday we had pla- the plan that we had pl- plans came mind you in the past he'd never could hang out on Saturdays whenever I asked he would say he was busy with his parents and it would have to be s- Sunday Un- honestly this didn't even register to me until I looked back anyways uh, after responding to two texts about uh, about plans he stated that tomorrow would be better for him and then went silent okay pa- fast uh, so I only put him on mute restricted mute on Insta he reached out uh, via that only to say I was being immature. That was it. Fast forward to this past weekend. I got a knot in my stomach telling me to look at his Insta. Couldn't find it. Asked my best friend. She couldn't either. Asked another friend. She found it and saw he posted a dog and tagged a girl. Throughout our whole relationship, you would never put me on his social media. Okay. My question is, why would someone keep you in what was clearly a horrible relationship for so long? Am I fair to assume he cheated on me with her? Would he? Okay. Let, let me just say. Run away from this. Run away. It, this is one of those things where it's like, you ever watch the show Bar Rescue? Bar Rescue, they make mistake after mistake after mistake, but then they keep the bar. And then they try to defend why they kept it for so long, and then they don't want to admit to all these mistakes they made. You made a few mistakes. That's okay. I, I think you need to own those. I'm not saying, I'm not speaking to him because he didn't write into the show. I'm not saying he didn't make mistakes and he wasn't an asshole. I'm saying you kept believing someone who kept letting you down. 
And, and at some point, you have to go, uh, this is too many lies. This is too many times I've been let down. That doesn't mean you have to turn into Harriet the Spy and start investigating why these things happen. These things happen because he has his own problems. He has his own insecurities. It wasn't a planned out thing to get you. And I understand where you're sitting here going, well, why did he cheat? Did he? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you stop wasting your time trying to figure out someone who will never be figure out a bull because he's not. I can't tell you if he was dating the other girl. I can't tell you if he was cheating on you. To me, all the signs point to yes, but where does that get you? you it wasn't a you or her equation. You're taking this as, oh, he went and met with this other girl because she was better or, 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 or prettier or hotter or smart. It's none of those things. It's his ghost that he's chasing in his mind that has nothing to do with you. So I know that's hard advice to take, easy for me to give, but I'm saying block out everything about this guy, um, own the mistakes. The mistakes are to keep believing someone who keeps disappointing you. Not, the mistake was not going through the experience. The mistake was not Oh, I should have been prettier than that girl because that's not what it was to him. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Feather, feather, love all the pods. They're the highlight during the quarantine. I've recently been texting with a guy with two guys from Bumble. Actually, I had phone date with one of them. I went pretty well, and we have a walking date plan. Both of the guys asked me about recent pictures. One asked me which was my recent picture of my profile. The other asked me to send him one and then sent me one of him. All... All of my photos are from the last two years, and I just don't think to take pit photos when I'm out and about. Also, I think that I look the same in each photo. I'll attach them for reference. Why do you think they would do that? Do they not trust my pics, or have, or have they been catfished? So she sends along the pictures from her profile. She's very pretty. Um, they seem to show who she is. Here's what I would assume, and I'm making an assumption. I would assume her Instagram is not attached to her profile. There, uh, anytime you get in the picture talk, here, here, here's a really maniacal thing that a lot of people do, i.e. guys. If you send one picture, you'll send the next picture. So if you agree, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Before we meet, let me see some pictures. And it's, oh, I just want to see, here's one of me, here's one of you. Now you're on picture sending game. You are one step closer to sending a nude. And, and, and that's as plain and simple as it gets. And I'm not saying that these two, P, two guys are, are maniacal assholes, but I am saying they've gotten used to a game that they're hoping to, all, to play. You don't have to play that game. You can go, yeah, I'm not, my pictures are on my app. If you need more pictures, then you need to meet someone else. I, I don't trust anyone that needs more than what the app shows them. The app shows you what it shows you. Whatever you are is 10% away from that on, on average. You're not going to be, and, and the catfish thing, they, they have a lot of things they can blame that sound right, but they're not. They just want you, are you loose enough textually to send pics? This is a sign of, for future things that they want. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Hey, Jared, Feather from DC. You're keeping me sane during the quarantine. Your happy hour was absolutely fantastic. That's right. Tomorrow night's the happy hour. Get your tickets. It's on my social media, on my Instagram, on my Twitter. You can find it. Get your tickets. 10 bucks. We have a fantastic show planned. The last one was so much fun. If you're listening right now and it's before Thursday the 14th, get those tickies. I've been listening to the pods, J training you up for two years. I've learned so much about how men think, but two years in, I'm feeling more and more discouraged by the emails and advice and the realization that all, almost all guys I've talked to are just trying to fuck and go out separate ways until they're hard again. 
<laughs> and then go our separate ways until they're hard again. I've learned a lot about being a better buyer and realizing that these guys didn't meet my standards anyways, but I'm starting to feel like I'm just a set of nice boobs and an ass to, well, basically everyone I've talked to in the past couple of years and that no one is really looking to be open uh, to anything past casual if seeing where this goes involves <laughs> something more than hanging out when it's convenient for him. For reference, I'm 25 and have guys 27 to 29. I'm open to being casual in the sense of seeing where things go, but my definition of casual includes dates to see if we actually like each other. And I'm having a really hard time finding guys who will even meet me for a drink before asking to me to come over. Am I too cynical? Does being a better buyer mean that there are really are significantly fewer options? Really appreciate your help. I want to be the party that guys want to join, but I need some help getting out of this disappointed rut I'm feeling in. So I understand this. I, I, I understand that someone could listen to the way I speak about dating and be uh, pushed away and feel depressed by that and feel that I, I could even understand the feedback that, oh, you make it too much about one thing or the other. I'm just relating what where my experience is in my dating life, and I pretty much assume I'm, I'm, I'm an average guy in that sense. Here's what I'll say to you. I have a lot of... I have a lot of close guy friends. I have a, and they all were a lot like me. And you know what? They all got married. They all had serious girlfriends. They all moved in. They all did all the things that a lot of the women write into me about for they uh, that they want to happen. And it sounds like you want to happen. So I'm trying to be hopeful. I think also you can be cynical without. You, I think it's also possible to laugh at men and go, you stupid fucking boy. Because I have had that in my own relationship. My girlfriend has done that to me. And that's not letting someone off the hook. That is looking them and going, you're a stupid fucking boy. And, and being okay with the animal that lives inside in the same way that a guy will do that for you. I'm... The other night, my girlfriend comes back and uh, she's she's so angry at me because I bought paper cups. Was she on her period? I don't know. Maybe. Was she having a tough Was she having a tough weekend? I don't know. Maybe. Was she stressed out by work and by friends and by all these things? I don't know. Maybe. The cup, to me, not the biggest deal. But you stupid girl, it's. You know what? Let and I laugh at it, and I, you know, at some point she's gonna come back, and we're gonna talk, and we're gonna hug, and we're gonna be okay. So again, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say two things. One, you're gonna encounter guys that make mistakes. They're gonna have an old dating app on their phone. You're gonna see a text from someone that you're wondering, what the fuck is that? You're also gonna have a guy that's gonna work through those things with you. You're gonna have a guy, and you can't be so ready to pull the trigger and so cynical that every look that doesn't look great is what runs you away. The other thing is, you gave me your definition of casual. Stop calling it casual. Stop saying you're open to casual. You are not. My definite, I'm open to casual being in the sense that they're, of seeing where things go. No, no, no. You're open to dating someone who wants to go on dates. Casual, let me just tell you what casual means to every guy. Casual, because guys are lazy. Casual means they're laying on their bed and you and they have their phone in front of them and you text, I'm coming over in 20 minutes and they get themselves hard. You come over, you fuck, and then you leave. That's casual to them. So you don't want that. I don't think so. Admit to what you want and what you want is to go on dates and that's okay. And to me, that should be freeing because now you can look at the guys who say come over right away and you go, all right, now I don't have to talk to you anymore. And you can look at the guys who do put the effort, do take you out, do still act like stupid boys, but also make efforts and negotiate with you. And you'll look at them more positively. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Do one more email. Uh, we'll get to the sponsors. We're sponsor people. I always mention the sponsors because I want you to support them uh, if they can support you. That's how it works. They give you some money. I, you, you go for some need that you might have, then you go use them, and then they help me. 
ExpressVPN, protect your privacy online, watch streaming services anywhere in the world. Get three months free at expressvpn.com slash JTrain. Noom, if you want to get in shape, Noom can help you create better habits. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash JTrain. FabFitFun, the summer box is happening now. Customize your box and get $10 off at fabfitfun.com. Use code JTrain. We just got the summer box. Jess loves it. Don't you love it? Loves it. ZipRecruiter. More than ever, ZipRecruiter is dedicated to uh, getting you, uh, helping you get hired. If you're looking for a job, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. Single female. I have a few matches on the dating apps that I've been talking to for weeks now, but at this point in quarantine, conversations have gotten a little bland. But also conversations with my close friends have gotten the same old, same old vibe because no one is really doing anything. Any suggestions on what to talk about other than what did you do today? What do you think it's important to set up a FaceTime date rather than chatting forever on these apps? Generally, I don't think much on the app. I, I don't talk much on the apps and just go on a date. But do you think quarantine changes the expectation? I think you know, I hope these chats turn into in real life dates once a quarantine. I think it's OK. I think you have to give in more to talking on the app. I think you have to. That's the reality. If you're not going to talk on the app, you're not talking at all. And you might as well just not be on it. I think it's okay to say, hey, I think you should be okay with digging into a fun conversation wherever they may come. Also, make your profile a little bit more you. Sometimes people are writing, what did you do today? Because you've written nothing about yourself that's interesting on your profile. That's, that's a reality too. But also, get a little personal. Get a little weird. Be more you. Because that gives people things to grab onto to ask questions about. And when those conversations go well, I think it's totally okay to go, hey, this was a lot of fun. Text me when, here's my number. Text me when this thing is over. I would love to get a drink. Now they either make that drink or they don't. You move on to the next person and you build up a little Rolodex of people that can come back to you because they're all not. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Let's do the coronavirus rant of the day. I, this is a user submitted coronavirus rant. Hit the music, Shelby. An emailer writes, poor class of 2020 didn't get their commencement ceremonies because of Corona, and now they get all these special podcasts and social media posts. The rest of us work just as hard to graduate from college. Try being an online master's student or an online student regardless. You're in school to learn and improve, not feel special in auditorium. Thanks, Jared. You're the bomb. Now, I love this coronavirus rant because I don't... The angle the emailer took... I'm not on board with that. I, I don't think the online master's students' graduation matters more. I don't think that, you know, you shouldn't have fun. Graduation isn't fun. You're there to improve. I'm not on board with that. I will say this. If you're graduating high school in 2020, I have genuine, um, I genuinely feel bad for you. If you're graduating high school in 2020, that sucks. Your final, you know, all the senior parties, all the the graduation parties, all the 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 after graduation parties, the the fun of seeing your friends and doing that, you know, those last six months of high school that aren't really school. You had to miss out on that. That sucks. To be the big dog on campus, you didn't get that last half of the year to do that. That genuinely sucks. And to the graduating high school class of 2020. I feel for you. I genuinely feel bad for you. It sucks. To the graduating college class of 2020, shut the fuck up. No one cares. None of you are going to work. Let me talk to anyone who is 10 years older about their college graduation, and they're going to tell you, I stunk like booze, my parents told me I looked fat, and, uh, I, don't, and I, I was hungover at the graduation. I don't even remember who spoke there. 90% of the people didn't give a shit about their college graduation. You're not missing out on anything. All you're missing out on is your parents coming to visit you at your college when they didn't even want to go, and you didn't even want them to be there. Half the people didn't even go, for that matter. So if you're sitting there with your, oh my God, but, but I didn't get to go to an auditorium and stand and sit in front of uh, uh, 13,000 people. No one gives a fuck about you missing your college graduation. You won't even use the degree that you bought 10 years from now. 
you'll be like, oh my God, remember when I was an economics major and now I'm a comedian who yells into a microphone and gives dating advice out of his ass? Yeah. For those of you crying about your college ra- graduation, you're looking for you're looking for people to feel bad for you. You're looking to play the victim. Nah, it's time to go home and it's time to find a job. College is over, bitch. That's today's coronavirus rant of the day. You can send in yours. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Now, I want to bring up a charcuterie chat because I got to say, I got sent this charcuterie and I'm going to show it. And it is crazy to me. Where did I sent it? Okay. Right now, let's do the charcuterie chat about a specific board. Hit the music, Shelby. Today's charcuterie chat is about the board I'm showing you on the screen right now. It's a fine board, but this is actually the problem with a lot of your charcuteries. You don't know who you are. This charcuterie, it's got some uh, crackers, got some Ritz. It has some Kroger style pre-cut cheese. It has some salami that looks like it was chopped up by a toddler. Um, There's some wheat crackers. All of this looks boxed, which is fine. This is a Kroger's charcuterie. That's who you are. You're Kroger. <laughs> you're, you're Food Mart. Because now in the corner, there's a bowl of strawberries. Who the fuck do you think you are? What do you think? You're going to fool us into thinking you're fancy because you put strawberries on a board that has chunks of salami that you found in a section that had packaged salami you didn't go to a fucking butcher you didn't talk to a guy named Giuseppe and be like give me the salami of the day no you walked into a fucking stop and shop and you picked up crackers in a box cheese in a package salami in a tube You got this pimento cheese thing that looks like it was probably wrapped up for seven years. And then you were like, oh, but I'll put strawberries on the corner because I'm just like in France. You're not in France. You're in fucking nowhere, Pennsylvania. That's what this board says to me. Be you. Those strawberries, they should have been more salami. They should have been more fucking cheese. Instead, you had to sit there and throw you know, seven inches into into strawberries so that we can look at you and go, hmm, and I love a strawberry. No, 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 no. This is a Kroger board. Get rid of the strawberries. That's today's charcuterie chat. You can send in your charcuterie chat to jtrainpodcast at gmail.com, jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. Let's do some quick hit questions and we're out of here. Let's hit the music, Shelby. Uh, favorite quarantine snack? The uh, tzatziki with the firehouse crackers. Firehook crackers? There are these baked crackers that you can get at Whole Foods, and they're like called firehook, and they have it in rosemary and sea salt. Those crackers... Top of the list for me. What are your favorite podcasts and TV shows? Um, I love Four Weddings. I love (laughs) Shark Tank, uh, The Prophet, The Bachelor, Bar Rescue, anything that someone would consider trash TV. What do guys, uh, why do guys ask to follow me on IG before we even meet? Because that might be all they need from you. What is the best way to get approached at a bar? Laughing and smiling and having fun with your friends. Don't approach. Just be fun with your friends that are also fun and, that are fun and laughing and people should come to you because people want to be around fun people. Yeah, they could approach. That's Oh, you can approach, but be fun with your friends. Don't expect someone else to be fun for you. You be fun. Best dating app opening line for Zoom date. 
The best dating app opening line is one that's personal to the person. We're all narcissists. Is it okay to pee when your boyfriend is in the shower, vice versa? If that's what you're into, I don't know, sure. What's the best way to start the what are we convo without scaring a guy off? I mean, to me, you know what you are. I would set, I would tell the guy what you want to do that you are dreaming of. Right now, you have a dream of what a relationship is. Ask for those things, and he will either do them or not. You're not, guys aren't chipmunks. They are not, they don't get scared away. They just don't want to date you. Is it possible to lower my expectations when a guy says he's busy with work all the time? You should leave the guy and let him tell you when he's not busy, and it probably will be never. If we are exclusive texting daily, getting everything except the label, do I need the label? Yeah, if you don't have confidence. There's, that, the label is a lot of times a band-aid for your confidence. Ask yourself what changes with the label and ask for those things, not the label. Do guys care if your nails are done? Um, I don't think we care. I like the look of done nails, but I would never look at someone's nails that aren't done. Ah, I'm lying. Sharp nails, it just says, it, it kind of says what the whole thing's all about. You can tell what the bedroom looks like by their nails. Is it okay to dump someone for not believing in COVID? Absolutely. Going insanely well, but he's friends with a couple exes. Deal breaker? No, I would want to have him introduce you to those exes if they're so important to him. Best way to bring up porn habits with boyfriend, genuinely curious, but haven't talked about it. Show him your porn. Is it better to replay, uh, reply to a photo or a prompt on Hinge? Um, whatever you f can find a personal thing to relate to it. Do men need a chase? Not necessarily. Uh, boyfriend follows porn stars on Insta. Told him it bothers me, but he hasn't changed. Um, to me, if they have over 100,000 followers, it's not the biggest deal in the world. They don't want your boyfriend as much as he wants, as he doesn't want to hang out with them. Can you really be friends with a guy you dated for two months and had sex with? Yeah. I think that's possible. Tips for an extremely short guy in the dating scene. Own it. You are what you is. Don't try and, be, you know, outdo it. Make fun of it. You know, jokes are always a good way to get through your own personal pain. I mean, the other thing is, if someone's on the date with you, they're there because they want to be on the date with you. Girl asking the guy... Uh, girl asking the guy to be my boyfriend. He already calls me girlfriend, but I want to make it official. Well, you're getting... You, you need to fucking care about the real things, not that, not the label. Do you think Countess Luann fucked a pirate? I don't know. I didn't see that episode. How do you keep organized? You don't strike me uh, as an agenda guy. Maybe the iPhone calendar? I use the iPhone calendar. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Seeing each other for two months, he ended it. I'd love to hook up now. How do I slide back in? <sighs> you have to be realistic with yourself. You'd love to slide back in, but... I would think of how you're going to feel after you guys fuck and he immediately leaves. Put yourself in that dream sequence and see if you like the feeling. And then I would say walk away. Find so You can find someone new to hook up with. You can't find someone. You can't go back. It, it, it rarely works going backwards. That's all I'm saying. You're hanging, uh, talking every day, only communicate with me on Snap, but, ha uh, but has my number. You should stop snapping back and only text. Hey, I'm, and, and also, you have to start asking for the things you want. That's our podcast. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. We'll be back next episode. Boom.